Welcome to my presentation about an important phenomenon in fluid mechanics. This phenomenon is used in multiple engineering principles to control the fluid flow, whether that is air or a liquid. Here are some examples of it in action. Here is the first example. This is where we see a concentrated flow of air being blown through a straw. This is creating a dimple in the water. As the air is directed over the jar, we see the air dimple move underneath it, following its curvature. As stated, this phenomenon isn't just limited to liquids. On this example, we see how water sticks to the curvature of a spoon, instead of going off in a straight line. As we can see, the water dramatically changes direction of its flow. Also, this is the easiest way to show this phenomenon. So what do these have in common? This phenomenon is called the Coranda effect, named after the man who first discovered it in 1936, Henry Coranda. It is a phenomenon in which a fluid sticks and follows the surface of an object as shown in the previous two examples. To better represent the Coranda effect in the first example, this animation displays how air bends around the object's edge instead of carrying on in a straight line. So how does this phenomenon occur? If an object's surface is in an unaltered state, there is already fluid on it, whether it is a gas or a liquid. However, when a force fluid reaches the object's surface, there is a friction force between the original fluid and this new fluid. As this force fluid goes over the surface, it pushes and drags away the original fluid, removing it. This creates an area of low pressure on the surface, resulting in Newton's third law, which states there is an equal and opposite reaction. Therefore, high pressure is generated above the force fluid, which pushes it down on the surface. This pushing down of pressure forces the fluid to follow the surface curvature of the object. However, if an edge of an object is too sharp, the grander effect can't take place. Why is it important? Using the information from a previous slide, engineers use a grander effect in a range of applications, mostly to direct the flow of a fluid. For example, in aerofoils, the Coranda effect is used to either generate lift or drag along with other effects. The way it works is shown in the animation. As the forced air sticks to the surface and moves along the aerofoil, the air speed is increased, leading to Bernoulli's principle, which states an increase in velocity results in a decrease in pressure, and a decrease in velocity is an increase in pressure. And by following Newton's third law, underneath the aerofoil must be doing the opposite. So, the air is moving slower, therefore creating high pressure. It is this pressure difference between that low and high which creates the lift. And to create drag, the opposite must occur. This is done by increasing the angle of attack of the aerofoil, creating a sharper edge at the top and a flatter edge at the bottom. Air is unable to follow the object's shape at a separation point, creating a turbulent airflow as shown in the animation. Behind the aerofoil in the animation, we see the fluid circulating back on itself. These circulations are called vortices, and these reduce air pressure. Reducing the air pressure increases the drag on the aerofoil, which slows the airspeed. Therefore, depending on what the engineers are requiring, the Coranda effect is very important and understanding it allows engineers to overcome issues. I would like to thank you for listening and I hope you enjoyed understanding what the Coranda effect is and how it can be used in some applications.